guys, my name is Maria Park and this is Approach the Nerd. And in this episode, we are reviewing Batwoman episode three, Down, 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 <laughs> which is an interesting title. So um, instead of me doing a verbatim breakdown of every scene, which could be very long and make a 45 minute video, I'm gonna go ahead and summarize things and then basically input my opinions. So let's start with Thomas Elliot, which comic book nerds know is the villain Hush. And if you've seen Batman Hush, which is actually based on the comic series back in the early 2000s, very good series, by the way. I think it ran for like eight or nine issues. Um, they did an animated version recently, which didn't get the best reviews, but I haven't seen it. So I really don't know if that's true or not. But the, the plot heavily involves Thomas Elliot and the Riddler. And the reason I'm bringing that up is the canon story for Thomas Elliot has been the same since in the comics. He is super jealous of Bruce Wayne's life. Even when Bruce brought, you know, lost his parents and they were both murdered in front of him and he inherited the family fortune, Thomas was still extremely jealous because he cut the brakes to his parents' car because his father basically was very abusive to him um, and his mother was, she had this really like meek type of personality in the comic when she he basically he was abusive like the father was abusing Thomas and the mother and she just kind of put up with it because she wanted to be rich so the gold digging line where Kate talks about why you know he doesn't like Bruce Wayne or Batman should I say because he knows that Bruce Wayne and Batman are the same um him saying because he was basically tethered to his gold you know digging incompetent you know <laughs> mother and it ticked them off and that's the entire reason why he wants to kill Batman is that he saved his mother when she should have died in the crash with the father and he would have inherited everything. Um, there are some differences. Um, Thomas Elliot in the comic is a brain surgeon. As a matter of fact, in Batman Hush, he even operates to save Bruce's life because I think some, it's like some fragments of like the grapple get stuck in his skull if I remember correctly. It's something like that. But he basically, Alfred calls him to save Bruce because that's what Bruce told him to do, to call his childhood friend. And Bruce, you know, it's hard to comprehend that your friend is jealous of you for stuff like your parents dying and you inheriting money, you know. So he, he's always been jealous, but it's, just, it's completely insane and irrational. So I think they did a really good job in Batwoman with Hush because... I mean, everything about how he acted was so similar to how he was in the comics, except he's a super genius in the comics. And in my opinion, in this episode, he was not as smart. Like when she talked about the GPS and the weapon that he stole and he was looking around for the GPS, the normal hush would have looked for that. You know, he would have had all of that, the bases covered because in the original comic series with Thomas Elliot, he and Bruce, when they were younger, used to play st like strategy games and he like... I'm just going to say it. Hush is the reason that Batman is so good at making contingency plans, not just with his villains, but with like former Justice Leaguers, because he taught him you have to think like your opponent. You have to think like your enemy. And that's why Batman is the way he is. So he owns a, you know, a lot of that to Hush, which is so ironic because Hush hates him so much. Um, but yeah, so Thomas was done really, really well. Um, this new character, Reagan. So Reagan is a bartender that Kate meets in the episode. Um, during the party scene or Thomas's party scene where he basically throws this party to show off his new building that's so much taller than the Wayne, you know, industries. So um, he, she meets Reagan and she's a bartender who's like very perceptive and can read people. The jury on that is still out for me because I can't remember a character ever in Batman or any other DC series. And I mean, I'm not an encyclopedia, but I have read a lot of comics and I just don't remember a Reagan. And so I don't know if she was created for this series or if I'm just missing something, or maybe they changed her name. But in my memory, for just talking canon, Kate, she goes from Sophie to Renee Montoya, and then Maggie Sawyer, who she ends up marrying. So I don't know who this Reagan person is. So she may be what I call a CW insert, like for the, the drama and the soap opera-ness of the CW hero shows. Um, I don't know how I feel about her. I kind of think that there's more to her than we're seeing. And normally in CW shows there are, I mean, otherwise she'd be a one-dimensional vanilla character. So there's probably something about her, like where was she when everybody was freaking out? Like she just comes running down the stairs, her hair's still kind of perfect. And like, I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if she was working with Alice, honestly, um, or has a completely different agenda or maybe a former Bat you know, Batman villain that we don't know. 
Um, but yeah, so jury's still on Reagan, but Sophie's reaction to that you know, situation was interesting. <laughs> she had this look like, oh, I told you to move on and you actually had the nerve to go do it, you know? I'm like, well. <laughs> um, I do like Mary. Um, her, basically, Sophie being the bodyguard for Mary, which, which is odd because it looked like it was Sophie's idea. And I don't know why. Like, there, there was not an exclamation or explanation of why she decided to be the bodyguard of Mary, which probably means she actually offered to be Kate's bodyguard. And somewhere in there, the line when she was talking to Mary, and Mary said, well, why doesn't Kate get a pocket girl or whatever, a pocket bodyguard? Um, and she said, well, the father doesn't feel like she needs one. I think that probably was what Sophie initially asked, if she could be the protector of her former girlfriend. Um, so yeah, you can see that she's not over Kate. As a matter of fact, the, the poor husband, that guy has to be the dumbest guy in this whole series. I mean, come on. How do you believe, you know, or your, your wife's like, well, why didn't, you know, you ask your wife, why didn't you tell me about this person that you just went to military school with? And she's like, oh, didn't I? And he just kind of like accepts it. Like, it's just nothing. And I'm like, wow, I see why she married you. You're just not really bright. So you can just pretend. Um, <laughs> And I feel bad. The guy, the actor is probably amazing, and he'll, I'll probably like his character more. But right now, there's not much to him. He's pretty vanilla, so. Um, I, but I did like Mary basically showing her medical chops to Sophie, letting Sophie know she's not just a socialite and, you know, <laughs> a social media goddess. <laughs> so that was a pretty cool scene. Um, I am wondering, and this is just, this is completely off topic of episode three, because I'm going to talk about Alice in a minute. But so... So basically in the episode, Kate has a lot of issues because she took the suit without permission, which a lot of fans before the show started were very upset about. And she decided that she was going to become, you know, not really become Batman, but somebody to intimidate her sisters or her sister and her posse. And for the most part, it kind of worked in the beginning, but then she kind of blew it. So she felt, well, that's pretty much all I needed out of the suit. My coverage blown. My sister knows, you know, that I was wearing this suit, so I don't need to be associated with this anymore. But then she kind of opened this Pandora's box, and the Pandora's box led to all of the of Batman's villains being creative to try and, you know, sniff him out, basically. Um, I like how she dealt with that. I like the fact that she knows she's not as good as Batman and she doesn't know how to use any of his tech hardly at all. She's having to learn as she goes, basically. <laughs> she's thrown out there, sink or swim. Um, she has no idea what, what she's going to do if it doesn't work. Like even the part where she didn't charge the glove to disable the gun was hilarious. It's like, oh, he's like, did you charge the gun? But did you tell her to charge the gun? <laughs> she didn't know what the heck she's doing. <laughs> so that, that whole thing to me was pretty authentic. I like the fact that she is literally starting from the ground up because a lot of series that they have, the person is like, you ever watch like, I'm trying to think of something childish. I watch a lot of Super Sentai, Takusatsu show. So I guess Power Rangers is the American equivalent. Um, how they just instantly know how to use every arsenal they have, like the suit, all the abilities. They know how to fly a freaking, you know, anything, a jet, a Megazord, anything, and they've never taken a flying lesson in their lives, <laughs> but the suit gives them that information. I've always thought that was kind of stupid. So I like the fact that she literally doesn't know how to use anything. Like, I don't see her going around in the bat jet, driving the Batmobile, none of that stuff, because she doesn't know how to do any of that. She knows how to fight and she knows how to be a soldier because she trained in military academy. So, you know, and she did have that little training out in wherever the heck she was, Antarctica, Alaska, where she was swimming under the ice, which was crazy. Um, but yeah, so she didn't have that. So I like that they're building her up and she's not just taking on the mantle and that she actually feels like she would let Bruce Wayne down if she wasn't successful. And I think we're going to see a lot more of that. If she doesn't win or something happens, yeah, she's going to take that stuff really hard and blame herself. So I think the trailer was very misleading because they made it seem like she was going to come in and be like, I'm Batwoman and, you know, I can do everything because I'm female, blah, blah, blah. And that's not what they were doing. That's just the, the editor's bad choice of, you know, <laughs> of trailer editing. So I do like the fact that she's basically paying homage to Batman. But what's interesting is, and this is where I'm saying it's not a tie-in with episode three, is that Kate Kane is not the original Batwoman. If you read the comic books, Kathy Kane, back in the 60s, is the original Batwoman. As a matter of fact, uh, Kate has a sidekick, which is like a female version of Robin. Um, I think her name was Firebird or Flamebird or something like that. And it was like, it was basically, she was the niece of the original Batwoman. 
So because they don't have the original Batwoman in the Arrowverse, I don't know how they're going to have a flame girl. You know, like how they're going to have the sidekick now because, I mean, they could still do it. It just, it's just going to be a little weirder. It won't be as organic as the way they tied it in with the original. It's like the predecessor still has a foot in the hero world through her niece. So, yeah, I, I do wonder how they're going to tie that in if they decide to give her a sidekick. Because, let's face it, Flash has Team Flash. Arrow has a team. Black Lightning, the whole family, plus Gammy are a team. Um, Legends of Tomorrow are a team. I mean, they seem to have a lot of team mentality here. Yes, um, Kate does have Luke, but what about the rest of their team? I mean, Luke's still learning how to do most of the stuff, too. He's not his father, even though he should be just as smart, but whatever. But yeah, so I wonder where they're going to go with that. So, But back to episode three, um, we got to see a lot more of Alice, a.k.a. Beth Kane, losing her crap. Um, she tried to kill for 24 hours. That was hilarious. We both knew that was going to happen. Me and you guys, not going to happen. Um... But what's interesting is when she found the map, because she's under the impression that her twin forgot about her too and didn't keep looking. So when she found the box with the map, you can see that affected her. So she's going to be one of the villains that's going to be very tormented because she is bat crap crazy. But she's also that little part of her that's Beth that she's suppressed is still screaming to get out. And walking into the house, being in the house of your father and his new family and seeing their pictures on the wall, like even taking the picture down and stomping on it with his new wife and stepdaughter, I guess. I still, I think Mary is the stepdaughter. Um, that to me just spoke volumes that that's not Alice. Everything she's doing is crazy, but is motivated by the hurt of a girl who feels abandoned by her family, especially her father and her twin sister. So... Yeah, um, she's a very complex and very complicated. I mean, she's very, you kind of can see it. Like even Catherine, the, I think her name is Catherine, the wife of her father, um, she's shady. I don't know what the cards being left out represent, but Alice knows something about Catherine that Catherine doesn't want her husband to know. And that is why she's pushing for him to take Alice out. It's she knows that's Beth. I'm 100% certain she knows that's Beth. And from the, the trailer for the next episode, it looks like maybe the father may find out because they seem to spoil things really quickly in these episodes. They've, there's not a mystery for long in the CW world. So, But yeah, Catherine is hiding something big time. And I wouldn't be surprised if she had a hand in what happened to you know, Kate and Beth's mother. I'm just being real. We don't know how they met. Like, we don't, we don't know the situation of how the father, you know, Jake, Jacob and Catherine met and got married. So I think we're going to learn a lot about Catherine pretty soon. So I'm excited about that. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall, the episode basically here coming into you know, herself and accepting her role as Batwoman, even though she realizes it's a long road. Um, the red wig did not bother me as much as I thought. <laughs> um, the suit is still pretty cool, in my opinion. I love the suit, honestly. And her line saying that um, basically she's doing it because she basically has created an environment in Gotham that's more dangerous because all of the villains are expecting Batman. And so she's basically saying everyone that's trying to get to you is now going to have to go through me. And I like that. I think that's a pretty good spin on, on what's happening in Batwoman. So this, this is definitely an improvement from the first episode and the second episode, which weren't bad. They just, it's slow. Like the pace was really fast, but it just kind of flowed weird. But now they're kind of finding their feet a little bit. So I like this episode. So I'm going to give it, even though I don't grade things, I'm going to give it an A minus. We're in the A range now. But that's my opinion. What do you think? Leave me a comment below and let me know. And if you'd like to sign up for jury duty, hit the subscribe button. And if you'd like to know who's next on the nerd ballot, hit the notification bell. Until next time, I can't wait for you to approach the nerd. Bye, guys. And if you have time, don't forget to check out some of these other videos.